So for today's video, we're going to be talking about the dial test. The dial test is utilized to differentiate between a posterior lateral corner injury and a posterior cruciate ligament injury. And so there's two positions that we primarily use for this with regards to the knee. One being 90 degrees of knee flexion, the other being 30 degrees of knee flexion. And this can be done in both a supine as well as a prone position. We're going to show you both, uh, beginning first with the supine position, and we're going to be using the left leg of our patient as a reference limb. So let's begin. We're going to start with the 90 degree position. Now the technique is to grasp the heel kind of from the plantar side. What this enables us to do is to create a degree of rotation through the tibia. And that's important because what we're trying to do is to assess the degree of laxity that occurs with external rotation. So the way my hand is positioned right now gives me a fair amount of leverage for internal rotation. So I'm going to switch my hand over such that I can create more external rotation as I kind of pronate my hand and forearm. All right. So at 90 degrees, we're going to assess for the degree of external rotation, laxity or excess. Now, if at this point we get laxity or excess, it, it may tell us something, but we also need to look at 30 degrees. So we assess here, let's say uh, for this case, we do have degrees of laxity, excess, in essence, um, too much mobility. We then bring the individual down to 30 degrees of knee flexion, and we assess here as well. Now, if only the excess occurs here, meaning if in that previous position of 90 degrees, we saw no excess, uh, uh, no hypermobility, but we do see it here at approximately 30 degrees, then we say that there's a likelihood that this individual is experiencing a posterior lateral corner injury. If you think about this, this makes sense, just based off of pure argument kinematics. If we're externally rotating, tibial plateau, on our femoral condyle, right? This would give us a clue into that posterior lateral corner of the meniscus, lateral meniscus, right? Conversely, if we come up to that 90 degrees and we perform this test again, externally rotating, looking for that excess relaxity, this would indicate that we could have both a posterior lateral corner injury as well as posterior cruciate ligament disruption. And keep in mind that P CL, posterior cruciate ligament, is going to be impacted by about this 90 degrees of flexion. This is really the, the position for the mechanism of injury for, for disruption of that ligament. Keep in mind, mechanism of injury is a dashboard injury where the individual is seated in a car and the dashboard comes and contacts the tibial plateau or tibial tuberosity, this proximal portion of the tibia, and creates a posterior translation. That ends up disrupting the posterior cruciate ligament and it could also impact that posterior lateral corner. The name kind of then tells you what we're doing. We're, we're essentially tracing the dial of a clock or the face of a clock from approximately 12 o'clock to about three or four o'clock in this kind of clockwise fashion. So this is supine. We can also assess this though in a prone position. And if the individual has uh, a little bit larger mass to their leg and just a little bit harder to control. We can have that individual flip onto their stomach. We're going to stick with the same limb in this case. And in this case, we're going to bring them up to approximately 30 degrees. Now, the difference being here is we have taken the hip out of the equation. And so in this case, we can still create that external rotation, right, through the tibia, and we can assess for that degree of laxity or excess that's occurring here on the lateral portion of the limb. We can also bring the individual down to approximately 30 degrees and assess again. The nice part of this, uh, and this is not necessarily part of the test, that being the dial test, but if you are suspecting a posterior lateral quarter injury, a, a compressive force should exacerbate that or should provoke that. In a prone position, I can axially load and can create slight compression while I create that external rotation. And while that's not part of the uh, named or, or kind of defined test, it is an effort in clinical reasoning that can help you in terms of recreating or reproducing that comparable sign that your patient is presenting with. Again, 90 degrees, 
if laxity excess is available or, or noticed, we're thinking that this could be a PCL and a PLC uh, disruption or, or potential involvement. If we only see it at 30 degrees, then we're thinking that it's only a PLC and not PCL. So this is our dial test. Have a go with a colleague or a peer and let me know if there's any questions.